literally my favourite time of the year. Here now, you have raised, my friends, a whopping... Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. I have, if you've been involved in fundraising for Children in Need this year, a very special surprise for you in a moment. Um, but first, the money's going to be divided up and sent across the country, including to places right here in Coventry and Warwickshire. The Coventry Boys and Girls Club is one of them. It's a project that aims to provide access to safe spaces, encourage more physical activity and improve relationships with peers for youngsters. Howard Richards is from the club and he's with me now this morning. Howard, hello. Good morning, good morning. Oh, listen, thank you for being with us on BBC CWR. That was an enormous amount of money raised, 39 million and more on the night. Uh, we need to find out a bit about how much it helps. So let's find out about the Coventry Boys and Girls Club for people that have never heard of you. How could they not have done? But let's find out. The only, the, I always say the best way I can describe the club is if I was sort of an, an alien or someone from a different planet, it's the coolest place to be for young people. It's, it's literally a, a building of uh, sports, music, activities, food, you name it, it is literally in this spot. So it's really cool. OK, so how do children come to be with you? We can, usually how we would do it is via sort of outreach in the community, whereby myself and staff members would go and engage through sports and uh, music, creative arts, and then draw them back into the club. Um, and then we'd also do it through online referrals. Um, there's so many, so many ways that young people can, via school, via college, uh, we network as well. Um, and we, we, we've literally have a turnover of at least 40 to 70 young people per week coming through those doors. Wow. Oh, gosh, you're helping a lot of people. And I am guessing, I am guessing, Howard, in the time that you've been around, um, there is a, a growing need for that support for young people. Most, most definitely. We, we notice that we have people that sort of young people that would come in as, you know, that they want to play football, but then they leave being a poet or they come in as a poet and then they leave being a caterer. Guards go right down as soon as they enter our club. And it's, it's so lovely to see, you know, confidence oozing out of some of the guys in Edda that are really shy. So a really good safe haven we have in, in, in store there. And are you allowing them a space where they can be children? Most definitely. If it's that they want to come in and, and have a, a conversation, they're allowed to. If, if it's that they want to come in and, and create something of the, their own. So we've had some young people create um, drama workshops um, some of our young people have said that they want to go skiing, so we've taken them on skiing trips. Um, oh. the, the, the opportunities are, are endless. <laughs> it really is. Because it seems to me that so there's so much pressure on young people nowadays that, to grow up too quickly, where, you, you know, the expectations of behaviour are certain ways, but actually they're kids. And so learning through essentially play, learning through exploration and learning where you can make mistakes in a safe place seems like there are fewer and fewer opportunities for kids to be able to do that because like the pressures of social media, you make a mistake and it's all over the place. Whereas being somewhere yeah. safe to be allowed to make mistakes and learn, it's essential. Yeah, it, 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 it's, you, you, you're totally correct. I mean, it's it's the feeling of you know being able to make mistakes when they when they when they do, but then also taking ownership. So yesterday we had a, a music workshop, and you're seeing some of the young ones that are really taking a keen passion for you know mastering and mixing songs, and they're like Howard, like you know, come and have a listen to this. You know, they they really take ownership of what they do. Um, it, it's it's so beautiful to see. It really is. Well, and then a sense of pride you're instilling in them as well, Howard. It sounds it sounds like an amazing <laughs> place. It definitely is. It, 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 the thing is, it's, it's ever growing. Um, parents are, are now finding out a lot more. Um, we've even had young people outside of Coventry trying to come as well. Um, so it, 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 it's clear that it's, it's, the word is being spread. So we, we, we can't fault at all. And, oh, my goodness. Oh, well done. So, and, and, I mean, there seems to be so much as well because you're giving 
kids the opportunity to find their to find their thing. So whether they feel their, yeah. you know, football is what they've always done, but like you've just said that they might discover poetry because you've got so much on offer there. Yeah, yeah, most most definitely. I'll have to bring you down, Lorna. I'd love to come. <laughs> I really would love to come because it sounds amazing and it sounds like there's definitely something we could do with you on a Tuesday night where we do, where I have a Tuesday night sports show. Quick um, mention for my own show on a Tuesday evening, which is all about grassroots sports. But actually, it's really... One of the things that I'm most passionate about is the... Is the um, way um, sport can be transformative uh, at any age actually that it can give you um, life skills that are transferable and you don't have to be like um, the most amazing uh, footballer for football to be really key in being a transformative element of your life you don't have to be the fastest runner you don't have to be that sport can do all sorts of things so in the same way sport can do that so can arts so can poetry so can music there's you know there are ways to tap in and help uh, kids' mental health, but you know, also just their general sense of well-being and self-esteem to grow through using those things. That sounds exactly like, unless I've got that wrong, that sounds like what you're doing on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> no, that that that, that you, you're correct to a to a T. Um, we we do have young people that have have left. You know, as you said, have, they've come in wanting to play football and have embarked on our uh, sports leaders courses, where they're actually also delivering in schools as well. You know, they discover in actual fact. I want to. I want to coach. You know, I want to coach net, netball. I want to coach boxing. It's it badminton. It's you know, it's 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 really, really, really cool to see. Um, and as for our music, if we do tap into our music upstairs, incredible. Um, we have brand new recording facilities, industry standard. So wow. if you want to go in as artist, you leave as Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, now, um, Howard, we're going to find out a bit about how important children in need is to the work that you do in just a moment. Are you OK to stay there for me? And then we've got a really special thank you for anybody who's been involved in fundraising um, for Pudsey this year. Are you OK to hang around with me for a bit longer on Saturday breakfast, Howard? Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Stay where you are. I've got a bit of Tom Grennan to play you. Live from last night's BBC Children in the... We have a very special thank you coming your way next here on CWR. Howard Richards is with me from the Coventry Boys and Girls Club, one of the groups that benefits from children in need money. So, Howard, how important is that money? You've talked a lot about what you do and the amazing impact you're having on kids' lives. How key is that children in need money? for you guys the worst it's hard to describe it's when we talk about helping young people you know a lot of people assume that it's sort of you know you know getting taking kids on you know massive trips to the states and doing these type of things but it all narrows down to the simplicity of things like that to footballs basketballs tennis balls and you guys have have allowed us to open doors for for access to the best sports equipment that we could have asked for we also have embarked on a project called the map project which funding has gone towards which allows us to to work and engage uh, with young people that have been kicked out of sort of mainstream school and that might be the case that they're struggling um with with being home with say you know being a young carer um or it might be that they're they're just having a hard time being around other young people with the funding we're able to actually create a hub where they can have one-to-one sessions where they can come and eat, where they can come and learn about health and hygiene, where they can come and get certificates in, in, in areas that they want to develop in. So it really is um, appreciated with the funding that we have received that we're able to do this. Yeah, and I mean, some of the stuff, I mean, I, you know, you might hear that and just go, what, just health and hygiene? It was, some kids just don't get that. Yeah. Um, and and actually just really basic skills and being and you know taught how to do really simple what seems like really simple things that some kids are just unfortunate for whatever reason and there are a myriad of reasons why some children don't get those opportunities and don't get the chance to learn how to communicate and and aren't given chances necessarily if they're young carers to to just be kids sometimes and and play and you're doing all of those things and and it's remarkable work that you're doing there um and we know it's super super important so 
we've got a special thank you, Howard, which yeah. you've helped us put together. So if you have spent the last week or two perhaps dyeing your hair or wearing yellow or putting on some pudsy ears or baking cookies or um, uh, doing a dance-a-thon or joining in with Owen's drum-a-thon, whatever it is that you have done, or Tom Grennan and the big sing-along as well, whatever it is that you have done, whatever it is that you have raised... Um, here at BBC CWR and from the BBC and from Howard and from the kids that are there that use the facilities that are funded in part by Children in Need at the Coventry Boys and Girls Club. This is a really special Saturday surprise, thank you. And it is just for you. My name's Manaya and I love about this club. I get to play with my friends. I've been coming to the club since I was seven. Now I'm nine. Mostly do engineering and when I'm downstairs I do football or connect football with my friends. My name's Myron. I like coming to this club because I like doing music and my brother used to work here. Uh, if the club wasn't here, I would like not be out like a lot and like I'd mostly be like at home doing nothing. And lots of stuff has happened so this is like a place to like get my worries out of the way. Hi, my name's Myrony and I've been coming to Boys and Girls Club since July 2018. I love Boys and Girls Club because they do lots of fun stuff. Um, if you've come home from school and you haven't had anything to eat, they'll feed you and you can really just express yourself and like show everyone who you are as a person. And um, without Boys and Girls Club, I think I'd fall in a... A really deep state like a mental illness I wouldn't have very good any mental illness because my dad passed away a year ago from Covid and coming to Boys and Girls Club it helps keep my mind off of things and distracts me and I can talk to people about my problems Thank you! Thank you so much if you've helped raise some money for Pudsey this year. Uh, you can hear what it means to the kids in Coventry at the Coventry Boys and Girls Club. And, and Howard, just a huge thank you to you as well for all the work you're doing. I'm sure it's massively rewarding, but it must also be... I mean, I just can't imagine how proud you are of those kids when you hear them. I'm sitting here smiling like a Cheshire cat lawn and listening to that. Oh, <laughs> it, it really... Do, it really... Yeah, it's, it, it really is a family. Um, I would just want to plug to anybody that wants to come along, Lorna, to our Christmas meal on the 15th of December. Please come down. Um, we want to give back to the community. Um, it starts at half 12, it does. OK, 12.30, 15th of December. And, and Howard, if people want to access what you're doing, if people are listening thinking, oh, gosh, I think I know some kids that would really benefit from being part of your family and the club that you have there, how do they go about mm -hmm. sort of walking through your door? No problem. If you go on to sort of Google, um, you can type in CBGC. Dot co uk you will have a list on there of all the services that we offer from the map project to the youth services to um to room hiring and, and so forth on our main website okay so head over to google yeah. we've got the information here as well so you can always just call us at bbc cwr and all the information we can pass on to you howard you are an absolute superstar thank you so much um and uh listen keep on doing all the amazing work that you're doing and give our huge love to all of the kids that you're helping to support there and again if you help to donate uh, to Pudsey and to Children in Need. Look at the incredible work that's being done right here in Coventry because you've been dipping into your pockets and helping us out. Howard's just been lovely to spend some time with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Lorna. You take care also. I will do. Thank you. You look after yourself. The wonderful Howard from the Coventry Boys and Girls Club and the incredible work that they do. Thank you to Howard Richards and thank you to you for helping to help those kids. <laughs> 